What made you straight up, nope, out of a relationship? Genuinely feared for my safety. I went over and we got in an argument so I slept on the floor essentially. I went to the bathroom to text one of my buddies to come pick me up since I thought she had fallen. Asleep. I suddenly get a text from her saying, where are you? And my phone made a sound. I froze up and opened the bathroom door and she was already standing there waiting for me in the darkness. She didn't say a word at all. Just stared at me until I walked by. I went back to my spot on the floor and got under the blanket and pretended to be going asleep. Until she did. After about 30 minutes I decided to peek out from under the covers and she was literally towering over me in total darkness with her eyes wide open the entire time. I got the fuck out of there so fast. She taped photos of her ultrasounds of a child she lost custody of with masking tape around my apartment on her first visit to my apartment. She threatened to stab me. We were dating for a month. She kept waking me up over and over all night trying to have an argument with me. The argument was about me going to sleep. I was dating a woman who was previously married and her and her ex had a two-year-old child together. One night, she tells me of this plan to coach her daughter to claim this guy had molested her because she wanted full custody and didn't want this guy around anymore. I decided right then to bounce right the fuck out of that relationship. Asterisk asterisk edit to bring closure asterisk asterisk. Yes. I did call and tell the father of her plan. As far as I know. She never actually went through with it but she did attempt to have drugs planted on him. Not sure how that eventually turned out. I had been dating her for a year but after that conversation. I ghosted her. Just straight up cut all contact. It was already on the rocks from roughly around the time the millionth drunken argument happened. However, the moment that sealed it was when she said something to me along the lines of, if your dad wanted to be alive he would still be here. My dad died in a car accident three years before that. Immediately went from loving her enough to make it work to thinking she was the most vile person on earth. What's good as a hobby but terrible as a profession? Crochet and knitting. I'm constantly being told, you should have a business doing that. But nobody will be willing to pay for my time. They'd only be willing to pay for materials if I'm lucky. For example, a double bed-sized blanket in a relatively simple stitch would take me 170 to 200 hours. Basic yarn approximately 40 pounds to 60 pounds. I'd be lucky if the customer would pay 50 pounds to 80 pounds. It's the same for a lot of handcrafts. I was literally jaw on the floor the other day when I saw a designer crochet halter top being sold for 600 pounds. I'd be super lucky if I got 15 pounds to 20 pounds. Baking. I love to make bread and cakes. But on my time, I couldn't imagine having to wake up at 3 a.m. every day to start making bread. Cooking maybe? I love to cook. But after doing it for work. Cooking stuff I don't even like making. For 12 hours a day. I get home and make myself microwaved ramen. I get so burned out on cooking. Hobbyist collecting. I've known two people who grew up loving comic books. So they opened their own comic book stores as adults. It's not just that 90 plus percent of comic shops tend to go under for lack of business. Although that's certainly true. The other reality is that the customers are, if possible, even more demanding, opinionated, and rude than customers in other retail stores. Chef. It's fun to cook for friends but the general public sucks. Well would you look at that. Turns out the answer is everything. In what movie did you relate more with the antagonist? Top Gun. Maverick never should have been there in the first place. Top Gun as an instructor course. Graduates return to their squadron as training officers. 
A hotshot who doesn't follow the rules and flies dangerously is not going to be a good instructor. Iceman gets just as good results while obeying regulations and flying safely. He was a better Top Gun candidate and will make a better instructor. Face off. I think. Roy Batty in Blade Runner. Though you're supposed to. That's kind of the point. By the end of the movie. The robot antagonist has shown far more humanity and empathy than the human protagonist. John Hamm's character in the town. He just wanted to catch some career bank robbers. Not a movie, but Tom. Jerry is a dick and bully for the most part. Hands down the Lego movie. The dad just wanted to enjoy his hobby in the basement to relax and get away from his stressful job and life. But his kid would not let things be and kept messing with his stuff. I get it. I have two small children. All I want is an hour to myself to do something. Like garden or crochet. And they're in my face. Breaking plant stems because they want to help repot or tangling my yarn as they help hold the ball. I felt for that man so much. Fellow humans of Reddit. What's your favorite thing about Earth's defense system? I like how it just destroys all attackers automatically before they even get close enough for us to know about them. I like the fact that their laser turrets use thunder sound effects so the populace living on the surface have no idea about the space battles on the orbit. The way it automatically flags people who ask too many questions. That every group of lifeforms has earned their way to this point in life in terms of biology. If you went 1000 years into the past, you'd kill so many people with your bacteria. But if you went 1000 years into the future, you'd most likely die because you have not adjusted to new bacteria. Thousands of lives die because they couldn't handle the bacteria and over time our bodies learned to fight it and protect against it. If anything new came to Earth, they would most likely die due to their bodies not knowing how to defend against our Earth bacteria. I like how so far it has been completely undetectable by alien technologies and 100% effective. I enjoy their vulnerabilities. In particular the vulnerabilities to spacecraft approaching the atmosphere at greater than 30 degrees. What can someone learn in 10 minutes that will be useful for the rest of their life? How to tie a secure knot. How a toilet works. Most issues are easily fixable without calling a plumber. Changing tires. Just cause you'll always find someone willing to help doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to rely on yourself. If it's important write it down. If you have to be there on time set two reminders. If it can be done in under five minutes do it now. Control plus C and control plus V. Sewing. Just a simple stitch can save you so much on clothing. What genuinely scares you to the core? That everything can change in a second. Just over a year ago my dad went for a walk had a heart attack and died straight away. He was in great shape. There was no warning and he was only 50. Everything changed that day. I'm not afraid to die. I'm scared of getting old and losing control over my body and mind. That is far scarier to me than having it all end. Phone calls late at night or at awkward times when people normally don't call. Those are never good calls. Swimming in a body of water that I can't see the bottom of. Parents' death. Having a long-term illness that is a burden on my family and wipes us out financially. You're on a first date with someone. And they tell you the name of their favorite book. You immediately leave. What's the book? I didn't murder my wife, but if I did here's how I did it. Or something like that, OJ's book. Dianetics, see you later. Facebook. 
one of those generic self-help motivational books that use fuck a lot. Any book within the 50 Shades of Grey. Subscribe, my brothers.